So that, that, is, uh, that is interesting. That half, you say half of uh, well, the, the half, ancient Hebrew could be understood. If you understand modern Hebrew, you can understand or read. Yeah, half more or less. And the difference is between prose and poetry. Poetry, of course, is much more difficult. But the prosaic chap book of Genesis, for example, yeah. Uh, every child of uh, eight and ten years can understand the book, most of the book of Genesis. All right, okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yes. See, I'm learning. You're going to bear with me again, like I say. <laughs> bear with my ignorance, because it is profound. It's all right. Welcome. welcome very, very much to the program where I'm welcome. I'm happy to welcome Professor Israel Schock. Schock, and he is an um, author of a more recent book we want to talk about and many other writings and intellectual from Israel just visiting us now. And uh, the, I want to show the book. It's called Jewish History, Jewish Religion, subtitled The Weight of 3,000 Years. And I might just say right at the very outset, as we'll be able to show on the cover, it, it's got, a, uh, it's got a, a forward by Gore Vidal, and it's got a statement of endorsement by Noam Chomsky, two very, very important intellectuals here in the United States. And uh, Israel, as you say you like to be called, welcome very, very much to Conversations and to New York City. Thank you. I wonder maybe you could. I wonder, could you share with us, uh, let's, let's just start at the beginning as it were. Why did you write this particular book? What are you trying to do? And this book is addressed, it's in English originally, you so say you're going to translate it into yes. English. But it's in English and it's addressed to the English audience, something like myself, the person exactly. in America. Exactly. Why did you write the book? Because the, one of the important political facts about Middle East and about American policy and generally Western policy about modern East is that people don't know anything about Judaism, and Jews know even less about the real Judaism of not only of 3,000 years, but about present people, than the non-Jews know. Really? And yes, because uh, they think that what their grandfather and grandmother practice is Judaism. And to give you an example, mm. ask a uh, uh, educated American Jew mm. whether the Jewish religion is monogamic or polygamic, and mm. he will think that it is monogamic. The beginning of mon monotheism, they would say. Not only, no, oh. that oh. Jews are, were for most of their history allowed to marry several wives, as many wives as they wanted, oh, exactly no, like Muslims, oh. and only by Christian influence and only in the last thousand years of history, they began uh, to be ordered to marry only single wife. Mm. So these are some of the things that would not be understood if you were to ask an educated person himself. Yes. Think it's, the, it's the same with Christians, or is the same perhaps with... No, Muslims, Christians, were mono, Christians were allowed to marry only no, one wife. No, but I meant that they may not well understand their history. There's a lot of history, and it's hard to understand the whole of history, or even one's own mm. sense of history. And, Many, very often we don't know well enough Christians history, are, a lot of other things. Christians yeah. are ignorant. Yeah, well. Jews, in addition to their ignorance, have a, a, a completely false idea that their folklore, that eating uh, bagel with gefilte fish, is mm. Judaism. Well, okay, Which fine. is even worse than uh, plain uh, ignorance. Well, all right, there's, there's ignorances and ignorances, and you go into a number of them here, and you also go into, they would be thinking of the, of the ancient times, of the time of David and so forth, and the ancient things, well, and that there are periods, and you have a yes. classical period. Maybe, what, what are the main misconceptions, in your view, that the Jewish people have? In, the, the main, the main misconception seeing. is that there is a jump between what I call classical period, which is the biblical period, and the creation of the state of Israel, or let's say modern Zionism, mm -hmm. and that nothing that happened in between, most of the Jewish history is important. Yeah. In my opinion, Judaism was created in this gap. It is completely different than what people could get from reading the Bible, the Old, Old Testament. Yeah. It is full of religious zealotry, of fanaticism, of hatred of the strangers. It is absolutely contrary to what Judaism is represented in the United States, but not in Israel. In Israel, we know, or some of, many of us know what Judaism is, and that those elements have to be pointed out. Just as Americans should uh, confront their own past, let us say, slavery and racism and so on, Jews, and of course all interested in Judaism and Middle Eastern politics, should know about Jewish past, which is, let us say, as worthy of being criticized as past of any human group. 
Uh, criticized and understood. And understood. You have two people here, Gore Vidal and, and, and Noam Chomsky, both of whom will have us look at our own past, Americans yes. and, and the present, and to understand the past and, and what's going on in, in, in radically different terms than the normal established conventional wisdom. This is why I admire them. Yes. And is this also something you want to do with this book? Yes. All right. And in but, that vein. Right? Yes, yes, but in Israel there are two different problems. There is our treatment of Palestinians or our relations with Arabs. Mm -hmm. On this I am as un, uh, unpopular in United States, let's say like Gore Vidal and Noam Chomsky uh, in America, and, our, and my treatment on Jewish religion. In this I am much more popular. In fact, I got the most wonderful review in our main paper. Which, Where is that paper? Haaretz. That's the major paper in which Israel. Is, yes, yeah. which is like New York Times the, here. The newspaper record. Yes, and of course New York Times will not give a good review to Noam Chomsky. No, well, they do grudgingly and increasingly they do. Oh, they I do. am they, glad. They, you know, a little bit. A little bit. bit. Them, I right? got right? a lot uh, yeah. only a month ago uh -huh. because we are fight. part of us are aware that our rabbis, the Orthodox rabbis, and here also the conservative rabbis, want to turn us into a theocracy. A uh, theocracy. Theocracy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they want to rule instead of having democratic rule. And this, among other things, will interfere in people's life. Okay. Now, uh, we have, okay, I want, we want to go back to the original point that you brought up when you said that there's this jump between classical and the uh, state of Israel, right? There's a yes. jump and there was a formative period or something. Now, when you go to the classical, where do, where, where, where do we, we do that? We have, uh, you know, we have a couple thousand years ago, we have Babylon, we have, uh, you know, David, we have Solomon. No, we, we have, have like 200 AD. We are begging. We have uh, the things in, 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 in Ukraine and in Poland. And what, the it, classic, share with us a little bit of the yeah, history. The classical period is formation of the Jewish or Israel Israelite nation in Palestine, let's say from the period of the judges and then the three kings, Saul, David, and Solomon, mm -hmm. let us say from the 11th century BC, mm -hmm. it ends more or less with the Babylonian exile at, at 587 BC. Then the Je a minority of Jews only return to Palestine and continue in another, in completely another way, uh, the ordering of their society. Then there is a dispersal of Jews in about for, uh, final dispersal, fourth, fifth century A.D. From that time, the classical period ends for me. And the Judaism as exists now begins from the time on. First of all, Jews are ruled by the rabbis. Mm. Oh, in this time, in this time, in this, time, mm -hmm. in this interview, from let's say the fifth century BC until the modern, uh, until after the American and the French Revolution. All right. Mm -hmm. And also, the Jews are never a society, but always a minority. Always a minority, and in diaspora. And in diaspora, yeah. and the minority, and this is a very important point, is always at the service of the rulers. All right, that's interesting. It is yeah. persecuted, but it is not as much persecuted as the peasants. The Jews are not usually, under modern times, at the bottom of the ladder. They are in the upper range, they are very far above the majority of human population which were serfs and peasants and slaves. Mm -hmm. And they were used by the overlords often as bailiffs and as other kinds Guns of things. And to things. squeeze the others, exactly. Uh -huh. And they were used in that certain sense because they were seen that where they were able to do that, and that put them, one of the points in your book is, that put the serfs, who they were putting pressure on in the interests of the overlords, exactly. who, got the, who got the gain, but that put them in a very bad light in the terms of the serfs. Whenever yes. they were able to garner power, they would direct it at very often the Jews. Exactly. Because and they were serving the interests of the Of, of the, the ruling class, of the exploiters, of the rulers, of the kings, of the aristocracy, and so on. Uh -huh. Yes, and we have therefore to look on Jewish history not in terms of Gentiles opposing Jews, Christians opposing Jews, Muslim opposing Jews, but in terms of conflicts between 
classes, nations, groups in which Jews played different roles, but especially the rule, the, they played the role of servants of the rulers, both among the Muslims and both among the Christians. And very often, at a, not just servants in a servant sense of bringing waiting table, but servants at a high order. Very high, 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 high servants high order with high a considerable order. amount of authority over the lower classes, right? For example, yeah. Jews in, within a given country had a freedom of movement. They didn't like it in one town, they could live to another. A serf was bound to the soil. Yes. A slave was bound to his master. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This immediately put them above the majority of the, let's say, the wretched of the earth, uh, to put, to quote uh, Fanon. Yeah, there's going to be a general thing among Zionists and others. There's going to be a thing that there were there were pogroms. There was a there was a constant condition of there being uh, persecution against the Jews by the Christians, and this is part of it, a part of part of the history. There is some of that. But is it overdone in the, this in the view of This is overdone. Most there was a limit. Put it in perspective for it. There was a limit. Let me, let me give you an example. Uh, the, uh, the, there is one city in uh, Europe from which the Jews were never expelled. This is Rome, because the Pope actually n persecuted Jews, limited their right, but never expelled them. The same Pope would never have tolerated Protestants in his city of Rome, so long. He, and of course, he would never tolerate a mo Muslims praying in, uh, in a mosque in the city of Rome. But there were, through all the course of uh, history, Jewish synagogues. In Rome? In Rome. Uh -huh. And in the same uh, the countries, Christian countries, or which never tolerate heretics, which burned all the time witches. Witches were not only... Uh, pogromized at one specific period, but every witch which co could be found was burnt immediately. Mm -hmm. With Jews there was a, pog um, a system of toleration with limited rights, but toleration. Mm -hmm. By and large, you're By saying and large, toleration. Uh -huh. Heretics, Muslims, and many other categories were not tolerated at all. They came to you. They came to England with the Normans. I think you said in great yes. number and served well. And at some point, the Edward the First saw fit to expel the Jews. The Jews were expelled from yes. country to country. What would have been the dynamic by which the whole of the Jewish people would be required by one sovereign? to be expelled and under what conditions and how because, is it to think when they are being expelled because, as a, like see, as a whole per people? I mean, well, it sounds like persecution on It, it was a persecution, all right, all right, all right. but the persecution it, was, is explained that they were mainly mon money lenders. Then he got Italian money lenders who, uh, who uh, lent him much more money at more favorite terms. With the rise of Italian capitalism, which operated all over the Europe, the uh, Jewish reformer role became superfluous, so he got rid of them, and they survived by and large only in Poland and other less developed countries in Eastern Europe, in which Italians didn't find it profitable to operate. We spoke before earlier throughout that period uh, that they were, they were very often bailiffs and serving the overlords. Now you just brought in a thing money lending. I don't know yes. whether there has something to do with usury or whether there has been proscriptions against usury Catholic. that they were able to do that. I want to bring that in. And then also the, this, whole, this whole question of, uh, uh, you know, put, when, 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 when did it change? Or what, 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 is that the beginning of banking in some sense? Or what was their role? I yes, mean, before the how beginning. How would you read that? The Catholic Church used to prohibit... Put some like, years on this too, if you Well, could. the Catholic Church from its inception mm -hmm. till about the times of beginning of Italian Renaissance, the 13th century, used very strictly to prohibit Christians lending other Christians money on interest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it, it didn't prohibit Jews lending money of interest. How was this? Why? What? How did this come? 
What? Uh, the canonic Christian law, by interpretation, by the way, of the Old Testament, used to do it. And, of course, Christia uh, Christianity in Middle Ages arose in very primitive society, mm -hmm. in which not money lending was uh, needed. And the Jews uh, lent this money which was needed. And was there not also a prescription among the Jews not to charge interest to their well, Jewish people, but they could to Gentile? Yes. In terms of their yes. interior... But since they thing. were all in the early Middle Ages moderately well off, they didn't need very much. Now, who was all relatively well off? The Jews. Uh, the Jews in early think? Middle Ages were uh -huh. part of the more wealthy cl uh, classes. All right. And when, throughout a great deal of that history that you're talking about. Yeah, through a great deal. Right. Yes. That's, that's part of yes. a myth that some people yes. would see them as... Then capitalism began yes. in Italy. Mm -hmm. I mean, not Renaissance, but the early capitalism. The banking system was invented in the 13th century in Italy all and right. in Florence and so on. And it spread all over Europe. That's where, in your view, okay, you're, you're helping me out here because I know we yes. had an industrial revolution that started in England and so on. But the banking revolution... Revolution was in Italy in 13th century. All right. And, and already there were banks who, in certain century, who lent money to all the kings of Western Europe, at least. Uh -huh. And the Jews, through hundreds of years, become less efficient than the Italians. And from many countries, England and France, first of all, they were expelled. And this question of, in order to run a banking system in a traditional sense, or as it emerged, it was necessary that the, the concept of interest be one that could be in a normal business-like kind of way, become part of normal business operations. And it became... We now have people in the modern world, just to jump, we'll come back to it, yeah. uh, the Islamic banks try to get around the charging of interest as a principle because they say it's proscribed by the Quran. Yes. This interest, but the World Bank and the international banking and the world banking system and the world economic system, the concept of interest is a core precept by which the world yes. is economically well, organized. Well, I so. believe that by my other ways around, they are finding ways to take the interest uh, under another name. All right. And the same when Jews got to, to Eastern Europe, mainly to Poland, mm -hmm. And where they found themselves in another less developed society, and where they become bailiffs and uh, um, and in uh, and also working people, because there were very many of them, not small minorities, but ten percent of Poland actually. Uh -huh. So many of them were craftsmen and so in the towns. In the towns, yeah, yes, not so much on the in land. purely Jewish towns. Many yeah. towns used to be. So they had also to learn uh, to. Give to lend with interest to other Jews, so they found a way around. Uh huh. Okay. Like Muslims are now finding a way around, and right. uh, and uh, okay. all right. Yeah, yeah. That's an interest. That 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 is an issue that still might arise in the world, and so how we're going to organize things. But anyway, so you have this picture now. Do you find that that runs counter to the this this view of them being in a relatively good positions in terms of the whole of the society throughout a good deal of that history. There was persecution, but there was also that they were not as persecuted as many of the serfs and people yes. who were below them. They were intermediary at the interest of the overlords. And they were tolerated. And they were tolerated by and large by both Christian and Islamic yes. people throughout most of that history. Yes. And that runs counter to what some of the theologically minded the, people would want to have be the picture of the Jews throughout that per this period. This runs counter to the opinion of not only of Zionists, but of majority, as I see, of America. American Jews mm -hmm. who think that all Gentiles, and especially Christians and Muslims, were always anti-Jewish. They're going to be in ever, for, forever anti-Semitic and, they are going and anti almost genetically yes. anti-Semitic. Yes. And Muslim. I am, for example, comparing it to the situation of, let's say, of Indian uh, money lenders in countries like uh, Tanzania and Kenya, or even in uh, other African countries. And when we say that Indians, uh, mono, Indian monoladers are not very much liked, even hated in this country, it doesn't mean that Africans are hating all Indians. 
There are hating the groups of Indians which fulfill a special social role. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When this role changes, the feelings are also changing. Yeah, and these, these things do revolve around money and finance and, and the interest charge and usury and the... And, and the, the social the, role, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. And, we, and it comes down to like a default, uh, you know, the World Bank and other kinds of more, you know, it gets, it gets doctored up and dressed up, the, the, but the relationship between those with the capital and those without the capital is still... Exactly. A, a, and primary tension within the world. Yeah. Yes, and those who mediate between World Bank oh. and, let's say, undeveloped countries yeah. are usually more hated than the World it's, Bank itself uh, yeah, it's, because uh, poor people cannot see the World Bank, but they see the local uh, money lender. Right, or they would see the bailiff or somebody Or the bailiff. So I in. say the same thing was uh, in Jewish history in the diaspora, yeah. you shouldn't generalize, you, sh yeah. you should look on the social role. Yeah, right, right, right. And this is going on. And then there became to be a focus up in, let's try and bring it up to the, to the, to the more modern, into, uh, into the Ukraine, into Poland, and into the concentrations in Tsarist. I don't know, there was a, the Khazar, there was a Khazar development, there were a great number of people who became Jews after... No, no this is, is, that a, a, is that a myth? Is this, that is a a myth. This, this is a myth. That's a myth. You could clear that up. Clear well, that up. how did it come to be that there was such a concentration of Jewish people in Ukraine, in Poland, and in uh, very Zarist simple, Russia? very simple. The Jews who emigrated from Germany and other West European countries to Poland have found an undeveloped country, a thinly populated country, in which there were, were almost no towns. They, as a town dwellers, founded new towns little land or, big, or settled in big towns, they multiplied. And in a very short time, they multiplied to, as I tell you, to 10% of the country. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened to the modern, uh, in uh, modern history. Mm -hmm. You see the population of, East, of Eastern European Jews between the uh, beginning of 19th century and First World War, 114 years, increased sevenfold in spite of the big immigration to America. Mm -hmm. There is an increase for population when there are good conditions. Uh, okay, all right, all right. And, and, and just, to, I want to go back real brush broke, uh, stroke over that uh, long history up to that period and say, because the, the, we, we, we made it sound a little bit perhaps idyllic in some people's minds and thoughts of it. There was anti-Semitism. There was all always... Um, always some anti-Semitism. Yes, and, there is always some xenophobia. Anti-Semitism yeah. is a form of xenophobia. Yeah. And on this earth, there is always hate of strangers. Right, by everybody. By, ev say, by yeah, every right, group, right, right. greater or, uh, or weaker. Uh -huh. and. It is no, I completely oppose treating anti-Semitism as a isolated phenomenon. Anti-Semitism is a form of xenophobia, and Jewish chauvinism, Jewish hate of strangers, of Gentiles, is another form of xenophobia. But it and was part of the horror, the story. Of course! So and now in Israel, yeah. it is even more part of the story, because Jews are powerful. Jews are now not servant of aristocracy or uh -huh. rulers. Uh -huh. Jews are the rulers in Israel in and are more po most powerful state in the Middle East. Absolutely, no doubt about it. And in diaspora, they were always not powerful. Not powerful, they were servants. Of they, the were, they, they were, were servants were... of the overlords, but they weren't servants at the bottom. They yes, were, exactly. They, right? And they, they made many enemies. Now, modern anti-Semitism that took its form in the, in the horror of the Hitlerism and the horror of the Second War is in a certain, or, or even after Dreyfus, right? That the modern anti-Semitism, that there was some anti-Semitism historically, but the modern anti, was in a certain sense, in terms of that long history, was in a certain sense aberrant in the fact it that was it was, it was completely, just completely unusual. New. Some new, things right. okay. new, and I will right. explain it, it to it, you. Yeah, right. In the worst pogroms, in the worst persecution before the rise of uh, Nazism, a Jew converted to Christianity and taught to Islam was always saved. Mm -hmm. And many Jews could be saved. But the modern racism, the modern uh, anti-Jewish racism of which Nazi German Nazism is the culmination, mm -hmm. says once a Jew, always a Jew. Mm -hmm. 
and the Jews exterminated Jew, uh, con converts to Christianity. With me, with Bergen-Belsen, I Yeah, you were... Yes. You so were there were several converts to Christianity. They you were, were there for two years. Almost two years. And time. I was there together with Jews who wore a big cross, mm -hmm. Catholic Jews, a big crucifix. It didn't help them. Most uh. of my group was exterminated. Right. They were sent with their crosses to Auschwitz. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You see, no Christian would do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this shows you the complete change between modern races. Well, that would not have been the case throughout all of history. Yes. Right, right. all right. That's you understand? Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Yes, it was Every very different. Every Jew who converted to Christianity or to Islam was honored. Yeah, right, all right, all right, right. Was welcome. So, Come with. Yeah. And here, they ex because of this modern racism, right. Right. they exterminated everybody. And this is modern racism and xenophobia in a generic sense that you are against as a of human being. Of course. And a humanist on a world human scale, being. right? As a human scale, you were you were you were against that. Now they, 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 that that was coming, and you and you said at one point in your book that you you said that you do not agree with your Marxist friends who will say that the uh, Nazism or the fascism was in a league with the ca it wasn't uh, the capitalists that were exactly exa were at I as don't, many people I to don't, try and understand this historical I thing. don't believe how do you explain the the irrationality uh, the unusualness the unusual irrationality of what has come to be called the Jewish Holocaust of the 30s and in, in Europe and Eastern Europe and so on. how do you explain it I explain it only by uh, uh, by feelings of hatred which can happen and be so strong, not only among Germans, but among uh, many other groups, that they override all consideration of interest. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me give you uh, the first consideration which brought me to this idea. Before Bergen-Belsen, I was in Warsaw Ghetto, almost to the end. Mm. And during the time when... Uh, you would have been a little, you would have been a Yes, youngster, yes, yeah, but a I still very much yeah. remember. Right, all right. During the time that about half a million of Warsaw Ghetto Jews were taken to be exterminated by a railway, mm. the Nazi army was fighting in Stalingrad against the Russians. Right. And instead of using the railway of bringing the much needed uh, supplies to their army, they used the railway to exterminate Jews. Mm -mm. This I, it's I totally you, irrational. Yes. It doesn't make any sense. I yes. mean, they could have been put in work camps. They would have worked. They would have done Oh, anything. exactly. They, they right. all were working for yeah. the German Made army no before. Sure. Yes. Made no sense. Yeah. After, many years after this, when I have So read, how can we explain it? How, go ahead, sorry. Well, first of all, there are, first, there are certain things which cannot be explained, which we can say all explanations are wrong. Mm. We don't know. Yeah, it's irrational. It it's irrational. Charge, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But many years after, this when I have read a wonderful book by Trevor Roper, The Last Day of yeah. Hitler, yeah. I found that one of the SS uh, supreme commanders wrote a memorandum saying why we exterminate the Jews now. Let us win first and exterminate them afterwards. Right, right, right. But his advice right. was not taken. Right, yeah, right, right. So the so, modern racism but, is based on something we don't understand but not on any form of interest that we know yeah not not on capitalism not on uh, religion not on anything that we know it is new phenomenon which we cannot explain well now didn't we ha we've had that sort of thing we had Attila the Hun wipe out great numbers of people and uh, the the Euphrates ran with blood and then with ink as they burned the libraries we've had horror bar horrors horrible barbarous kinds of things that were done and holocausts that were done no I don't see and there were holocaust but we did Hans didn't uh, they killed a city which opposed them, but a city which submitted them right, and paid right. a tribute. All right, all right, all right, right, they actually right. didn't do anything to it. So it is an irrationality thing that's coming out of racism, xenophobia, and uh, these kind of things, if I may, that you, do you don't draw any fire or ire or anything of that sort of thing, when you begin to say that in a certain sense that there is elements of that, that we have to guard against in terms yes. of what's going on in Israel now? Yes. And Bec within the Jewish after Baruch community? After Baruch Goldstein, of because course. Because now the Jewish community have to, because, for the first time, strong. Yes, and because now a percentage of not negligible, at least 10 to 20 percent, 
are welcoming what Baruch Goldstein did. Don't forget that Baruch Goldstein entered and into a mosque mm -hmm. and killed worshippers kneeling before him. Mm -hmm. And that he's treated now by a certain section of Jews as a saint. Now we're into Israel proper and the Zionism has happened. I mean, we were talking historically, the Zionism came as a development. It was led by the Ashkenazi by and large, right? And the Polish... Well, it was led Israel. by Jews, by secular Jews who rebelled against Orthodox Judaism. Judaism, but Orthodox Judaism survived and no. influenced ma influences many people uh, in Israel itself. And that's one of the themes of your book is that for the Jewish people, they were freed from the tyranny of the rabbis and of the Orthodox religious religio holding that the Jewish religion had been for many of the Jews throughout its history. Yes. That's another sub-theme of your book, right? Yes, and right. I am saying also that many things that you associate in this country with the Jews, for example, so many distinguished Jews in Incredible. the last 200 years, yeah. the Jewish humor, yeah. and so on, are product of, not of Jews, but of Jews who rebelled against Judaism. They re rebelled against the Judaism in the intervening period, against themselves, against their past. Is it like the Protestant Reformation? Is it the Protestant... Like the more Protestant like Reformation? Renaissance. Except because, uh, or you, yeah, but you had a... Like a yes, yeah, but, but here but it is religious, religious and you have, you have this whole, you have here Israel, as you understand, we have the reform, we have the conservative, we have the liberal, we have the well, various kinds of more secularly oriented... I but they still go to shul. Uh, I think not temple. reform and conservatives, but the Jews more or less of European models who criticized everything. Mm. I am not for reform and for sure not about for conservatives because reform advocates the change by convenience. Mm. We take the car to the synagogue which is convenience. I am saying that many things in our Jewish past are wrong. Well, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is that there are, there are there, it's not only just orthodox, you're not either orthodox or secular total with no religion, right? Or do you think that we should abolish religion as any uh, grounding thing for the Jewish people at all? Would you like to do away with religion? Are there any mediating inter... Uh, you know? I think we should criticize religion. Uh, like the Christianity, Christianity uh, criticizes itself, maybe from the, by the promptings of the others. After all, Christianity admitted that it was anti-Semitic. All the Christian denomination admitted it. Yeah, finally they admitted one, yeah. that it supported slavery. Uh -huh. Mm. They admitted many wrong things. Mm. My real attack against all Jewish existing denomination is not that they are religious, but they are not admitting that their religion was mistaken and did wrong, as so many Christians and other religions are admitting. It's the thinking that they have revealed truth and that the absolutism that comes with revealed truth and the orthodoxy and the, and the fundamentalism in a certain sense, a term we use with Muslim, but it can also be in the Jewish camp as of well. Of course it or exists among the camp. Jewish, it but the any... other Mm -hmm. The reform are not fundamentalists, but they will not criticize the past. Uh -huh. yeah, they will I want them to criticize the past. Criticize the past so that we can learn from the past in order not to have to repeat the uh, mistakes yes. of the past. Not That's only to honest. say what is convenient now. We have yeah. to. I am among those people who say the roots are important. Mm -hmm. The roots mm -hmm. of every human group are important. Mm -hmm. huh? And therefore the Jews have to learn about their past, and learning means also criticizing. Yeah, and so the, and the reaction to that, yeah, it might be, and there were some people who would have taken umbrage at the Jewish saying that they were the chosen people. They are the chosen people. That kind of ethnocentric view uh, you can also find among the Hutsi and the Tutsi. You can find it among, uh, xenophobia exactly. is to be found among every group in the country. But what, do you think there was a special thing attached to that in terms of, because they will say that, they will say that they were, and that you say in your book, it seems to be a sub-theme of your book, is that internal to the Jewish community itself, is they deliberately isolated themselves from any of the, the Gentiles, apart from the persecution directed at them, by their own internal yes. psychology of thinking yes. they were above, in a certain sense, exactly. these people among whom they were forced to live. Yeah, exactly. Not uh, even in Palestine after the biblical times, mm. so there were is a. You see, there is a Hebrew name well known in America, at least in New York, Goim. Mm. Goim. Goim mi Goim. Goim. Yeah. Goim. Gentiles, which mm. means it is, it does, this word doesn't exist in English. You mm. don't have a word in English which will combine the Tutsi with the Japanese and with the right. uh, Americans. 
this uh, word doesn't exist in the Bible, in mm. the Old Testament. Mm. Or it existed, it means uh, it has no this meaning. Yeah. This chosen attitude that we are completely separate than everybody else. Yeah, we're the chosen people. We are and the that our truth is somehow better than other truths. Not is only widespread among people in the world. Yes. It is the basis of xenophobia and other uh, things that are leading and ethnic identities that are exactly. so large and Nazism. Aryans, they called, they thought. Well, they, if you. They thought Aryans were the chosen people and the Jews were the untermenschen. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So I am saying that people should be aware, and Jews first of all, that the same attitudes which can lead to the same disasters if not checked. Mm exist among the Jews. Mm -hmm. And there, the duty of, first of all, of the Jews is to point about those possibilities and to warn against And them. to warn against the interior to themselves in a certain sense. And you say the, the accomplishments of, the, of the, uh, the Jewish population in the modern experience has been absolutely fantastic. In every field imaginable, they have contributed. In you were yourself an organic professor. Uh, they, they were learned people. They've done, they've contributed so far. I don't know that it's going to be in, in this, this attitude. I mean, uh, this thing, we, we now have a book that's going to be very, it's going to be very controversial in this country. Charles Murphy's written a book. I forget what the exact title of it is now. I think it's called The Bell Curve. It takes The Bell Curve and it's measuring intelligence. We're discussing it now and we're now in October 1994. And he's taking a measurement of intelligence, IQ. I has, don't believe in IQ. Well, all right. Let me finish this thought, though, then, Ezra. Then you could go to it. But he's taking the idea of IQ and he has said that between the various groups of the country the, uh, of the world and on a racial basis and other terms that some people, uh, groups have a higher IQ, and those who do well have a higher IQ because they do have a higher IQ. And they have, uh, for instance, he sees a higher IQ between the, the white, Caucasian, and the Negro, right? So you can see this is going to create, and this is part of the reason why they have not done well, the Negro. Oh, no. and, and, he say, and he has in there that the people, as a people in the world, who have the highest IQ in the world, can be measured of all the people, are the Ashkenazi Jews. It's not going to help in trying to disseminate among the, Ashke the, the people of Israel who is founded by Ashkenazi Jews the, that they are the most intelligent people as they are measured in the world of these things. It's not going to help the xenophobic problem in Israel I, when this news gets out, do you think? Or well, really? Maybe I, they are the chosen people. I will or, tell you, you know, it'll feed into that. we you have understand heard, what I'm saying? We have heard about this a long time on yeah. the not on the bell, and I will tell you what is uh, our answer of our better part. Oh, better part. Uh -huh. Yes, because yeah. we have a better part in which, of which I am a, uh, a member. Yes, sir. We are pointing out that in many American universities, the Chinese and Japanese students are doing better than Jews. Now, in this test, the Ashkenazi Jews are higher than the Well, Jews. we are pointing to another all test. Right, all to right, another right. test. Well, you I'm know just trying to tell you. you yes. Know, so I'll give some explanation. For I will give you my intellectual contributions. I, am, of the I will Jewish give people. you better explanation. Mm. 250 years ago, Ashkenazi Jews produced nothing. All ah, right, yeah. Why they produced nothing? Because they were under tyranny of the rabbis. Right. Under the tyranny of the rabbis. Uh, yes, it? yes. It is the liberation from the rabbis yeah. and from the Jewish orthodoxy, which, by a contrast, produced uh, this great flourishing, which I don't deny, of Jewish genius. The same mm. thing happened in ancient Greece. Mm -hmm. When the Greeks liberated themselves from the their old custom. See, look on the hundredth century of the classical uh, of hundred years of classical Athens. What Athens and f and a small part of Greek were produced. Mm. Look what Renaissance, what the Italian Renaissance. Also, produced. it's very dangerous. This whole business of ethnocentrism and uh, xenophobia, as you say, is very very dangerous because when you think about it, it was that kind of thing, that kind of argumentation that was going on that 50 years ago that the Jewish people were seen by the Nazis who were in power at that time. Exactly. As Untermensch. Exactly. Right? And it's very, it's very, very It is dangerous. wrong, dangerous, and has to be fought. Also, also very, very, very inappropriate, not only among ourselves as a human society, where we need to have a humanistic association with each other, but one could draw that even larger in terms of, uh, in a certain sense, um, ecology or a sense of inclusiveness that of we are course. inclusive within a, a system or an orchestra and everyone 
must play in the orchestra rather than just a few tubas who can toot and be the leaders exactly. or something. Exactly. Right? But I will point to you another thing. But that we have such danger. ideas that you are quoted are also dangerous for Jews and Ashkenazi Jews because by believing in their superiority, they are losing their mind. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, this and is. And they have. They have. If I'm not wrong, and I don't know, I've not been there much. But there is a problem of the way in which they have dehumanized in the minds of many, some of the Zionists and others in Israel have de tended to de, or maybe I'm wrong, straight me straight if I'm not, have tended to dehumanize the Palestinian peoples who very often whose land they have taken they, of course. and the Arabs in general and perhaps even extending that out to the Muslim or the Islamic world. Well, right? And that they, those know, who it's a dangerous thing. Now that they are powerful, there are new responsibilities that should come with that, no? Of course, they dehumanize the Palestinians most, also because of their military weakness, because uh, they, uh, but they, uh, let me tell you that the most important thing which I want to convey is that our attitude on general Israeli Jewish attitude of dehumanization to Palestinians is not so extreme as the average attitude of American Jews. Uh, that's interesting. I want to point to Very you that the majority of organized American Jews are supporting the Israeli right wing and the extremists All right. more than they are supporting other people. And I want to support uh, to tell you that a good proportion of the facts about our oppression and humanization of uh, Palestinians comes from Israeli Jews. And that men, uh, I have noted, the, or I want to tell that my position in Israel among my Jews has improved, but of course it has not improved among American Jews or American organized It's Jews. improved from when to when? when to, what, what made the difference, do you think, in the improvement in the Israeli attitude toward the Arab peoples or the Palestinian Two things. People. Modernization, which means, first of all, accept, acceptance of modern fashions, travel abroad, and so on. By the Sapras? By the yes, Jews. by the Sapras all also, right, all but right. by all the young gener younger generation. Right. And second, I will surprise you, military defeat. Military. We were yes, we were the worst from '67 to '73 when we saw that we are absolutely powerful. It is like in America in Vietnam. It is a military defeat first in October '73 war, and then in Lebanese in the war with Lebanon of three years, which turned many of us into better sense that. They have seen that our army may be powerful, but it has limitation. You saw those 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 events, or the, of course, you saw the military. The recent military history of Israel is demonstrating that Israel is militarily vulnerable and is subject to defeat by the forces around them. Yes, it seems to me Israel is the military superpower. But 200 on, atomic bombs they've got to tell yeah, But on Conde, the same was true about America so long as it was not involved in Vietnam, deep in Vietnam. Uh -huh. Don't fall. If we will stay within our borders, mm. if we will withdraw from all occupied territories, we will be also military strong. Mm. The more that we will oppress other people, I mean Palestinians, mm. and the more that we will hear uh, Mr. Sharon and his many American friends and invite other countries, we will become vulnerable. Mm. American was vul America was vulnerable in Vietnam in spite of its atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we are staying within our borders, we are the strongest country in the Middle East. If we will strive for hegemony and if we will oppress another people, this is also in a, this is also a military weakness in mm -hmm. addition to injustice which comes. Okay, first. so then, with it, then the question becomes the borders. And there's different kinds of borders. There are those who say you have must have Judea and Samaria. There are some who say that you must have uh, Sinai into Babylonia. You, there are some in Cyprus, and there are, there are greater views of it that have been yes. written and written into the thing. And there are some who say you must come back from the West Bank. You must create a Palestinian state, a two-state solution. There are some who would say, radicals on the other side, who would say there ought not to be a state of Israel at all. 
I wish. And that you should have stayed where you were in diaspora, and the, the state of Israel, Zionist, the whole Zionist enterprise was wrong from the beginning. Those are some extreme positions that could be taken, and, you know, what, you know. Well, first of all, even if Zionist enterprise was wrong, uh, we are living where we are living. Maybe extermination of Red Indians was certainly wrong, but the people who, a great majority of people who are living in the United States cannot go back from where they come. But you only have a handful of Red Indians. You're not surrounded by many, many so more. We, if, you were, if, the, if, the, if we were on the eastern seaboard in New York City and we were surrounded by many, many millions of, uh, many, many number, our numbers of uh, Red Indians, the situation might be different. Colonialism, if it was seen like that, uh, European colonialist powers had to retreat from, uh, had to retreat from uh, all around the world, all of Africa, India, India, they had to pull back everywhere, the European experience. And do we see the Israeli, you know, the Zionist thrust being moderniza modernization tied into the West and that being a tie-in of the West into that large Isra uh, Arab uh, underdeveloped world that we are going to tame that world and bring the Western model to that and they will all become like America and Israel is an extension of the West and that it's an extension of the West into that Muslim world and they are going to have to be brought around and learn like we learn and understand and it is a conquering attitude that is held and after all they've won the war and why shouldn't we be able to just dictate the terms uh, they were after all able to dictate the terms under which they were going to talk to any Palestinians whatsoever and they are doing it from a position of absolute power. Now that's the way some people see it, and why should we have to put up with these people complaining? Well, Just some things uh, to talk about. Well, I will, uh, I will take two parts of your long question. First mm. of all, uh, many of us are deluded that we can dictate to Palestinians, but, uh, ma but the war of 73 persuaded great majority of us that we cannot dictate to Egyptians, and we actually returned all the Sinai. Mm -hmm. True. And now the strength of Syrian army has persuaded, let's say, half of us that we cannot dictate to Syrians. And funny as it sounds, it is true that we are respecting to some extent the Hezbollah because they fight well mm -hmm. and were not defeated by us. Mm -hmm. But there is one very big difference between the Israeli Jewish society and colonialist society, which is that Tel Aviv is cleaned by now by Jews. All the, let us say, there are no Arabs in Tel Aviv or very few Arabs in Tel Aviv who do, let us say, the menial jobs. Or the, and in the Israel that I Whereas remember... they did in the past. I mean, in, Not in, in all the past. In, no. Before 67, yeah. even Western Jerusalem was cleaned by Jews. Ah, and, uh, okay. and all Israel as it existed in 67 was practically run by Jews in all the jobs. Ah. Okay. So there was the big difference between Israel and the settler states and the colonialism is that by whatever means, I accept by unjust means, a society similar to Massachusetts in 18th century was created, which is in which uh, it serves itself. Yeah, you say you accept the injustice. Uh, I that's accept. You accept the injustice delivered down on the Palestinian people, and there were some who backed off from that. But you, at the same time, are trying to, in a certain sense, if I may, you're trying to, in a certain sense, say we must, as Jews, divorce ourselves from the ancient historical ties to that land and the ancient historical myths and mythologies that we have. Yes. And yet Zionism is, in a certain self, tying itself to that old history and saying this piece of real estate is unique and it's part of the Zionist This thing. I oppose, because actually Tel Aviv is not mentioned in the Bible except no. as a town in Babylon. No, but the land is. The land is. The and land so of I Jerusalem. Just, and for uh, thousands of years they said next year in Jerusalem. And there is that special tie coming out of the history. And while we want to remember Remember the history, you also want to remember the thread that would give a special tie to this territory even, that is the basis of the Zionist claim of the Even Earth, this is falsification, or, you okay. know. Right. Excuse me, because you are. Fine. The uh, next year to Jerusalem means attachment to the temple. What the Jews were faithful the 2,000 years, what they prayed. What they hoped for was a reestablishment of the temple and the animal sacrifices. Well, maybe that's coming. They're going to maybe, the but this is what I am of. Yeah, yeah, but you're I opposing it. But doesn't that give a certain kind of special quality to the 
let's just let's take loaded term the invasion by ashkenazi and Amer north american jews to take over the land of the palestinians and to take it over that there's a reason behind that and the reason is based on the historical ties the jewish people had to that part of the world and that necessarily is tied into much of the old testament and the old thinking and the you know the tomaic thinking and that sort of thing you and know, this what i am denying all right. and this all right. what i am denying absolutely mm -hmm. i base my claim only on the existence of Israeli Jews who think themselves Israeli Jews, who are a living community, and for whom uh, Israel, Israel in 67 borders, is their home. So then that the reason that Israel, and the, main, and the main claim, and in a geopolitical sense, the main claim that Israel has to have the state of Israel there and to have the limits that they can achieve and so forth is a geopolitical one in a certain no, sense. I they have the geopolitical power to be able to exert themselves. This is their claim uh, for, for the years of Reagan or maybe of Clinton also. But and also that they've been able to garner in an incredibly effective way the support of so many people within the Jewish community in North America to get us to put five billion dollars a year into Israel and to establish that as an outpost of Western civilization on the Eastern Mediterranean. So their claim, so their, so their claim, but this is, why, this is why the ignorance of American Jews and of Americans about Jews has to be combated. This is why I've written my book. Well, what, what, to what, to what, say that the claim of Jews to represent the West is first of all wrong. The Jews, the authentic Jews, don't see themselves as representing the West. They see themselves as a chosen people. By right. definition, well, well, therefore, right. the West are not part of the chosen people. They are Gentiles. They right. are going. Right, right, right. And, and so, in a certain uh, sense, the egotistical Western view in terms of the uh, broader world history, in fact, that's been part of the xenophobic view of colonial powers throughout the history, that they must have the white man's burden of bringing civilization to the rest of the world. And, you know, maybe the thing is that there's another book that's popular now in the United States called In Support of Elitism, I think it's called. But the question is, there are certain elite peoples and we should recognize. And this trend and this tide, I'm afraid, is happening in our country. And I don't know if it's happening in Europe as well. A, an assertion of the, of, the, of the Western civilization's need to bring their institutions to the world. The World Trade Organization, the multinational corporations are coming now. So that the powerful are going to be able to lead the weaker of the world, and that's well the way it ought to be. This kind of view of the world, just based on pure geopolitical power and strength and economic power and strength. Well, uh, the world. this is a view which has been adopted, I am afraid, by the Israeli government, yeah. more by Labour Party than by Likud. Mm -hmm. Rabin happens to be the greatest admirer of the World Bank and of IMF and of Reagan and Nixon, of all prime ministers of Israel. Well, they're going to get Reagan and Nixon supporters coming stronger in this country. Yeah, all but the time. this is what I am opposing, and I am also pointing to the contradiction in these views. Uh -huh. Those in Israel who want to, be, to expand and be chauvinistic, they don't want to serve the West. They want to serve the Israel and the, and the, and the Israeli, and Israeli, Jew, uh, Israeli Jews. Mm. I am pointing to a very important contradiction that this view will, means, will mean and that Israeli Jews will have it much worse than during a, what I call a reasonable peace. Because oh, yeah. in, if they persist in if this, they persist in this they will be more, not only they will oppress and kill others, they will be also kill themselves. And it, it was be, if I may, it, it may be that we also have a thing to learn in the United States is that it is not by the, as, as much as that might be, a tempting nectar to taste, as it were, having been in diaspora for so long, that the, the ability to have the military power to impose your will upon a people does not necessarily lead to a system that out of the justice of the system itself, or the appropriateness of the system itself, gives you peace. That of through, course. Through an imposed we military will never, power, and that for the first time in a couple thousand years, will, they have military power, and they, that's a, 
heady stuff. We will never have peace until we will be integrated in a democratic Middle East and mm -hmm. uh, if we will not accept all the peoples of the Middle East as our equal mm -hmm. and if we will not renounce any role imposed by the West or rather I would say by American establishment uh, for keeping security or keeping peace uh, for it. And in this, I want to say to you, you mentioned the American money flowing, so much American money flowing to Israel. Five billion a year, I think, no? About Over like the this long in real couldn't have existed, In the last year. Couldn't have existed without it. No, it is not true. Israel right. didn't receive any American money until the war of 73. Okay. And okay. Israel existed very well between, let's say, before 67 without American money. Okay. Okay. The American money was given it in the word of our satirist. My master feeds me and I bite the people whom he tells me to bite. This is called strategic cooperation. Uh -huh. End of quotation. We should renounce this and we will live much better by, uh, like uh, other people live, by normal trade relations without uh, uh, weapon industry. If, they, without, uh, if, if, if your surrounding neighbors can be convinced in a certain sense, Saddam Hussein and others, who uh, have that, if they, they can be defeated in a war that again is being, you know, that again is the, the, the war clouds are there again, there is Iran, there's Hezbollah, there's just poor Corporal Waxman was killed. You have this tremendous Hamas anti-PLO, uh, even the accord, the slight accord and the slight recognition that was given grudgingly to Mr. Arafat and so forth, that, that, that was done, was done, and you have opposition within your own country, that that is that they're going to be able to find that the Arab peoples, unlike the North American Indian peoples, are not, are going to agree to this, and they're going to agree to this, because by and large, you have the military power to force them to do it. Military power to force Mr. and can dictate the terms by which you will talk to Palestinians. You have the strength. You are coming from a position of strength and that you are bargaining from a position of strength, and that gives you the ability to, in a certain sense, compel the Arab or the Islamic world to see things your way, whereas historically or since 48 they had not. Let us not speak about Islamic world as one entity. Absolutely not. Uh, Syria and Egypt are not Iran. Hmm. And, uh, and let's, let us take the U two parts of the question apart. Let us take the, uh, the states around us and let's take the Palestinians. With we only the, have a couple minutes left. So all right, so I will uh, speak about Palestinians. This is the most important thing. I assure you now as a realist interested in Israeli politics and who knows very well the Palestinians under their rule, that if after the Oslo, I don't agree to Oslo, mm -hmm. but if after the Oslo, Israel would be generous in few things not affecting security, like in freeing all the Palestinian prisoners who after all can be arrested in any time, the Hamas power would have collapsed. Uh -huh. Hamas power has from the beginning proceeded First of all, from Israeli cultivation, you don't, Hamas was practically found that in late 70s under Israeli protection against PLO and Arafat was then strong. But it proceeds from the oppression which is inflicted on Palestinians mm. in, in few insufficient things like in freeing of prisoners, mm -hmm. in restoring the confiscated lands, part of them are not used. Israel would be truly generous immediately after the Oslo, Waxman would be alive. Yeah, but they haven't been, and there's still forces that do, and there will be reactionary forces among the Israeli people who want to uh, break bones as they did you know, during the Indifata and so forth. So the problems, are, the problems are still there. It's still the flashpoint of the world, in a very real sense, in the most dangerous area of the world. And I think the, the, the Hebron shooting, uh, the, uh, the killing of Mr. Waxman, uh, Mr. Arafat is in trouble. He can hardly get any support for whatever the few things that he's trying to do there's a, are not there. And then you also have, just at the last minute, we also have, you have the Natura Carta, who were, the, no, who were the, Carta. the ultimate orthodox people who take a larger view and say that the whole venture of Zionism by these secular-minded 
smart alecky, secular minded modernists and so forth who disregard the fact that it was the call of the Torah that this was to be done peacefully with first respect for the people who were living there and after Mashiach, this is all to be uh, thought of as being part of the mythic pattern that we should try and divorce ourselves from. We have about 30 seconds. Can well, you know, this is, I, so I will tell you that although I am pessimistic for the short run, and things will get probably worse, especially in regard to Palestinians. I am optimistic in the longer run because I think that democracy is going to win among the Israeli Jews and also among our Arab neighbors. It's got to win out in the whole world. Really. In the whole world, world, of course. Sir, welcome Thank to you. Very Thank you very much. much. It's been your pleasure to have the perception. Israel Shaikh. Forward by Gore Vidal, written by Noam Chomsky, published by Pluto Press. Pluto right? Press and distributed by Westview in this country. All right. Jewish history, Jewish religion, uh, the wait of 3,000 years. Happy to be able to bring you those perceptions. We invite you to tune in again next week. We'll be coming back then, Israel, once again. Welcome very much to New York City. Thank you for participating. Have a wonderful tour here in New York City. Right? Thank you very much. Okay. See you next week. That's it. Uh, 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 goodbye. And again, welcome very much for coming. Thank you.